welcome to the next tutorial in electric power system in this tutorial we will focus our discussion on y bus formation and tuning of power transmission line so the first problem which shows the single line diagram or the one line diagram of a four bus system so we can see the buses are represented by the numbers one two three and four which are four bus system and this diagram is known as the single line diagram which is basically the interconnection of different impedances the line impedance that are identified by the buses on which this terminate are shown by this table so the table represent the impedance which is represented in the form of resistance plus j times reactance the unit is in per unit so we do not have any unit and here uh, the per unit system are dimensionless so the resistance and reactance and impedance all are given in per unit system the interconnection between the lines 1 2 1 3 2 3 and so on represent the corresponding impedance which is given in the table now we have to calculate the y bus assuming that the line shown dotted is not connected so initially this line is not connected in the system we have to calculate the y bus in the next step what modification need to be carried out in y bus if the line shown dot is connected now in the second case we will connect this line and try to see that the existing y bus which we have calculated from these parameters when the line 1 2 was not connected how it is modified when a new line comes to the y bus system let us see the solution so the resistance and the reactance which are given in per unit now need to be converted in the conductance g and the suscept susceptance b so the impedance and admittance matrix from the circuit concept is the impedance is basically r plus j times the reactance whereas the admittance is basically the reciprocal of the impedance which we can write 1 by rpu plus jx pu that is the power unit system and these can be represented as g plus jb in per unit system so we will convert the impedance into admittance because we need to calculate the y bus of the system so impedance has to be converted into admittance first now the data that are given to us in the form of r plus jx in the table for different connection of the lines of the single line diagram we have to convert that into conductance plus j times acceptance by taking the reciprocal of the impedance quantity so now all these quantities will be in the form of admittance y using these data which we have computed from the data given in the table we have to calculate the y bus of the system so the given the single line diagram and we have already obtained the data for the admittance which is connected between different buses we can calculate the y bus of the system so how y bus is calculated in order to calculate the y bus we have to obtain the diagonal elements first so all the diagonal elements if we write y11 y22 y33 and so on till the number of buses so here the total number of bus is 4 so we will reach up to y44 now y11 y22 all diagonal elements will be equal to sum of all the elements that are connected to a particular bus for example here the bus number 1 the elements that are connected are only only one that is between 1 and 3 the bus number 2 the elements that are connected is one here and one here so the admittance between the bus 2 3 and the admittance between the bus 2 4 will be added up to form the element y22 similarly if you want to form y44 then it will be equal to the admittance that is connected between these buses that is 3 4 plus the admittance that is connected by this bus that is 2 4 in this way we can form the diagonal elements the off diagonal elements are basically the negative of the common 
element that is connected between the two bus. For example, if we need to calculate between the second bus and the third bus, so that will be minus of y to 3 in the matrix. So we can form the y matrix or y bus matrix in similar manner. Wherever there is no element, we can put a 0. Now we can substitute the values that we have got it from the table computed in the form of admittance and create this y bus. So we have created the y bus now where this element is not connected in the system. Now if the line admittance is connected between bus 1 and 2 then in that case there will be a modification in the element of the y bus matrix. So since the elements are connected between 1 and 2 so we will not touch the third bus and the fourth bus elements and we have to get y11 new, y12 new and y22 new. These are the new elements when a line is connected between the bus 1 and 2. Now whatever the element is connected between the buses 1 and 2 that will be add up with the corresponding elements that are already present in the buses. For example, here y11 old will be added up with the new element that is x here which is coming in the bus. y12 old will be added up with the element which is present between 1, 2 and y22 element will be added up. The negative sign will be there for the common element. So first we will form the diagonal element y11 and y22 then we will form the off diagonal elements y12 and this will also be 1 minus of y12. So here y11 and y22 new there will be addition of the element and y12 element there will be a subtraction. So we can form the new y bus matrix when the element 1, 2 is connected and other buses element 3 and 4 remain the constant. So the y bus matrix is modified from the previous version. So any new element when connected in the existing bus. So we have to form the new admittance elements and then we can modify the existing y bus that we have calculated when the system was not having that particular element. Next problem. We have to build y bus matrix using singular transformation for the power system that has been shown. The branch impedances of the line are given. Self admittance of the y matrix are given. So we have been given y11, y22, y33, y44, 55 and 66 because we have 6 particular elements that are being connected. Now we have to see if this is a 4 bus matrix, so the maximum number of buses n is equal to 4. So I need to create a y bus system which is 4 cross 4. And that we will be doing using singular transformation or the tree method, graph method. Let us see how to do that. So for the system that has been shown in the figure, that is a 4 bus system, we have to obtain the corresponding tree. So we know that a tree is basically that graph which do not have any closed portion. However, the tree graph is not unique in nature. Let us take the nodes represented with the black color and the red color shows the branches. So here we have four bus system and zero is basically the reference node or the ground node that we can take. Now we have to connect the branches between the nodes in such a way that there is no closed path. For example, let us see this one. We are going from second branch like this, fifth branch is like this and third branch is like this. So we do not have a closed path. If the third branch is in this way, then we would have got a closed path. So total number of nodes we have got as 4 plus 1 because 4 number of nodes plus the 0th node that is the reference node and the number of branches we have represented with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So 6 branches are there and 4 nodes are there. Now we will create bus incidence matrix which is represented by a hat where the top we will be representing the nodes and down or bottom we will represent 
the branches. So rows and columns we are representing by nodes and branches. We have to fill up these elements by relating the branches and the node. How do we relate it? We have to relate in such a way that if any element is oriented away from the node then we will get plus one. If the element is coming towards the node we will give minus one. If there is no incidence then the element will be zero. For example let us see the relationship between the node zero and the branch one. So node zero is here and branch one is here. It is going away from the node so we have given a positive sign. Now let us take the node first and branch 2. So the node 1 is here and the branch 2 is here. So it is going to inside the node that is towards the node. So we will be having a negative sign. All the zero filling will be done when there is no incidence between a node and a branch. Now if we observe the size of this matrix, it is not square. It is a rectangular matrix, so it is known as a singular matrix. Now, in the next step, what we have to do is that we have to remove the reference node. We have to remove this reference node column. And then the incidence matrix A hat, we will get A matrix, which is having all the nodes only. So here we have one, two, three, and four nodes. And here we have all the branches, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we will be having the branches and the node relationship removing the 0th node. If we take the transpose of these matrix changing the rows and the columns and after that we have to obtain the Y of the system that is the admittance model of the system given the admittances in the form of the table. So all the diagonal elements we are filling up of the self admittance that is being given in the table. Once we have got the Y system of the admittance, we can find the Y bus using this relationship. So Y bus is basically the matrix A transpose that is we, we have obtained multiplied with the Y admittance matrix which we have obtained now and then multiplied with the A matrix. So the Y bus of the system is basically a 4 cross 4 matrix because the number of buses is basically 4. So in this way, using the singular transformation tree concept, we can build the Y bus of the system. Next problem is uh, related to tuning of the power transmission line, where the transmission line is represented by figure 1. So there are two figures we have been shown. Let us see what are these figures. In figure 1, uh, we have a transmission line this is the sending and voltage, this is the receiving and voltage and the transmission line reactance is represented by Excel. If we connect a series capacitance, so we have connected a series capacitance to the line, in order to improve the performance, we have to calculate the power which is transferred if the capacitive reactance Xc to inductive reactance Xl is being given as 0 0.5 and 0 0.2. So we have to calculate what is the net power transferred in the line from the line reactances. Let us see the solution. We know that the power transferred to the load from the sending end is being given by the formula. So power transferred to the load is equal to sending end voltage multiplied with the receiving end voltage divided by the net reactance of the line multiplied with sine delta where delta is the torque angle or the power angle between the sending and voltage and the receiving and voltage. The unit will be in watts. Now if we add a capacitor in series with the line then the net power which is transferred to the load there will be a modification in the denominator where the reactance of the line will change which is equal to XL minus XC on addition of the reactance. Now if we take the ratio of the power of the second case by the first case, we will get in this manner and then the different ratios of the reactances are given in the problem. Then we can determine when the reactance ratio of the capacity to inductive is 0.5, we can get a relationship that the power transferred in the second case is twice the power that is being transferred when there is no series capacitor. On the other hand, 
if the ratio of the reactances is 0.2 then we get that the second case power transferred is 1.25 times the power that is being transferred when there is no series capacitor. So changing the series capacitor ratios between the capacitive reactants and inductive reactants we can control the amount of the power that is being transferred from the source side to the load side. So in this uh, particular tutorial we have focused our discussion on Y bus matrix formation and how to tune the power transmission line using a capacitor putting it in series. Thank you for now. See you in the next tutorial.